Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, July 30th. Man, July 30th. Already, already uh, end of July. Hard to believe, just hard to believe. And I, I know, I, I always view this as a, as a turning point in the year when I can no longer write out the full month, but I have to abbreviate it to fit it on things. Uh, so July is the last of the short named months. Uh, it's interesting that. Anyway, July 30th, technically it's not, I'm, I'm, I can't lie, I, I'm recording this at night, this is actually Saturday night for me, uh, but there's reasons for that, I'm, I've been tired, I just, and I got a lot to do tomorrow, and I just didn't want to have the pressure of having to fit in another, another thing, so I thought, let me, you know, get the video done tonight, I did want to make sure I had some time to sit down and, and smoke a pipe and chat with you all, uh, even though it may not be about anything particularly earth-shattering, but the truth is it never is. Uh, so, got a topic in mind. It's a little odd, but hey, sometimes that's the price of admission. Uh, Saturday night, quiet Saturday night, because my wife uh, just arrived in Pittsburgh. She called me just a few minutes before I started recording this to tell me she was safely there, and she'll be there for a week. And... Uh, just visiting with the in-laws, taking her mom to a doctor's appointment, and she's got all kinds of cooking and farm stand going and all kinds of stuff planned. So they're, they're going to have a big old time. And uh, me and the dogs are doing not a whole heck of a lot, to be honest. But tomorrow's a busy day. I'll talk more about that. I've got my cane rod pipes number one here, and the tobacco is... Uh, the tobacco of the week, chosen by the folks on the Friday Night Live stream. So if you want to get in on the tobacco choice of the week, visit the Friday Night Live stream and stick around to the bitter end, because uh, somewhere between the beginning and the end, we choose the tobacco. And this uh, this week's is the mystery tobacco. Uh, this is a bag that was sent to me by Stephen Skip Kane. And actually, I'm embarrassed to say it was a couple years ago they sent it to me. A uh, bunch of tobacco, uh, some gifts, a uh, pouch for uh, eyeglasses and a hat and all, all kinds of nice stuff. It's very kind of them. And uh, included amongst the tobaccos, which have all been smoked and enjoyed, was this pouch that I think is labeled Mystery Backy, but looking at it this morning, uh, this evening, <laughs> I'm lying without knowing it. Looking at it this evening, I realized that it might actually have said Mystery Baggy at some point. So, anyway, it's either the Mystery Baggy or Baggy. And when I first got this, I remember quite clearly smoking it and saying it reminded me of uh, Northwoods, but it wasn't Northwoods. And then I thought maybe it was the Just For Him blend uh, Mellow Mushroom, I thought it was called. Uh, and... That's not what's in this baggie anymore, and that's probably because the topping, it was a crossover Latakia blend, I thought, and the topping is gone. Uh, there's, well, the good parts of the topping are gone. And what's surprising to me is I can't get very much Latakia out of it either. It's, it's got kind of a non-distinct pouch note, just kind of vaguely aromatic. Um, I smoked it on Friday, and it was... Kind of cocoa heavy in terms of uh, what topping was left and uh, some other notes that I'm not going to mention until we get into it. But yeah, so anyway, I'm loading that up now. Uh, to be honest, I did not enjoy it. Uh, did not enjoy it on Friday night. And again, this is my fault because I let it sit in the baggie for so long. I think I ruined it. But did not enjoy it Friday night. Did not enjoy it this morning when I tried another bowl. So odds are, and by the way, the interesting thing is this is perfectly, the perfect moisture level. So it's probably pretty heavily glycolated, but let's see. So. I was going to go this morning, I had some things to do, I wanted to wash my car, and I was going to go to the flea market. 
and it rained, so I didn't do those things. But tomorrow, it's supposed to be a nice sunny day, so, and hot. So I'm hoping to get up early and get out and get those things done. And that's one of the reasons why I uh, wanted to get this done Saturday night rather than Sunday morning. But I will upload it so that it plays on Sunday morning, so we keep the tradition going. So, the flea market. Uh, why do I want to go to the flea market? I have no idea. I, I was thinking to myself today when I decided not to go, I thought, well, am I disappointed? Well, no, not really, but I really did want to go, but I don't need anything, and I don't typically see very much there. I'm looking for tools, you know. Um, and I don't need any tools, but I just like looking at them. You know, if I spend more than five dollars at a flea market, it's a it's a big deal. I found something really cool. So, why do I enjoy this so much? And I really enjoy this particular flea market. I enjoy the way it's set up. Interesting people there. Sometimes they've got some live music. Um, there's a place where you can get food, uh, which is not terrible food um, for a flea market. You know, it's a big flea market. It's attached to a bigger uh, market that's got like grocery stores and all sorts of little shops. It's, it's basically a mall of sorts, but it's called the farmer's market. So, I was thinking about it and I mentioned something to my wife uh, a couple weeks ago when I came back from the flea market where I showed you I bought that razor knife and the uh, uh, what I'm using is a, a birdcage awl even though it's probably a bearing scraper. Uh, I, I told you that I, I, shortly after that I was talking to my wife about it and I said, you know, I, I really like going there and part of the reason I like going there is that I get to talk to the people. And she looked at me like I was crazy because as I've said many times and you might be surprised to hear me say again, I'm a real introvert. I do not like talking to people, especially if there's a lot of people around. If you get me one-on-one, -on -one, I'm okay. If you ever see me at a pipe show and I feel aloof, or if you ever see me anywhere and I seem aloof, uh, come up and talk to me because I'm not aloof. <laughs> I just really hate that whole breaking the ice social stuff. I just can't do it. Well, I shouldn't say I can't do it. I don't like to do it. But once it gets rolling, I'm, I'm happy, you know. Even with groups, you know, once I feel comfortable with the group dynamic, I'm, I'm happy. So why do I like to talk to people at flea markets then. And I was thinking about it, I said, you know, I think it's because it's this little compressed social interaction. It's almost compulsory. You know, you walk up to a to a table of stuff and you just want to look at it quickly, but the person's standing there and they, you know, you got to say something to them because they're looking, you know, you make eye contact with them and you say, good morning or, you know, how are you or something. And they respond and, and you have this interaction with them while you're looking at things. They might call something out, like you'll pick up a saw and they'll say, oh, that's a nice saw, isn't it? You know, yeah, this is a distance. Sometimes they know what they're selling, sometimes they don't. You know, you can take it as a chance to, maybe, maybe if you don't want the saw, you can at least let them know what you think it's worth and screw the bargain hunter behind you. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't nice. I didn't mean it that way. But there are these little compressed mandatory small talk sessions that you have to have, but there's no consequence. You know, you're, you're not in a social group, you're not, you're not in your own element, you're, you're both out of your element. In a few hours, you're both going to be heading home and neither of you are going to remember it. It's safe. It's a safe way to sort of practice, as strange as this sounds, practice your social skills. And and have fun, and I guess that's, you know, people, people that are outgoing and, and gregarious and, and like that sort of thing, they probably get to have that kind of fun all the time. They look forward to that kind of stuff. Guys like me, we have to trick ourselves into having that kind of fun, and it's an opportunity to do that. I know that's a little strange sounding, but unless you're like me, and then it might be, you might be thinking, well, that's exactly what I do. 
Uh, I let, so that's very different than I'm at the grocery store just trying to get out and somebody walks up to me and says, you know, can you believe the price of beans or whatever? I, I don't like that. I don't have to have that conversation. It's, it's interrupting me. And 99% of the time, they do not care about my opinion on the price of beans. They just feel like they're just one of those people that, you know, I don't like those people. I shouldn't say that. I don't like the initial interaction with those people. I'm sure they're lovely people. I'm sure if I got to know them, I'd, I'd have a great time with them. But again, it's that initial interaction. And when I'm just trying to get through a grocery store and I'm not interested in what you're looking at, even if I am interested in what you're looking at, I don't want to talk to you. I just want to buy my stuff and I want to go home. Um, yeah. I sound like a grumpy old man. Well, I guess I am. I guess I am. So, that's my story about small talk at flea markets. Uh, I hope you at least know me a little better now. You know, if you ever see me at a flea market or a pipe show, and I seem aloof, come over and say hello. If you ever see me at a grocery store, leave me alone. <laughs> That's the moral of the story. So what can I say about this uh, mystery tobacco? It is And again, I ruined this by letting it sit in a baggie for so long. Uh, it's bad. This is this is borderline not smokable. I'm getting no flavor other than a a little bit of cocoa. It's a little bit of cocoa, hot air, and then there's this. This astringency on the tongue, and it's got a slight, what I, I said last night, and I don't know how else to describe it, a slight aftershave edge to it. And people were joking on the live stream that it was, uh, sm I was smoking aqua velva. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just not. So. What I, what, the reason I'm doing this, the reason I'm doing this tobacco of the week thing is I found all these little bags of tobacco that I've got to get rid of. I've got lots of jars of tobacco i got to get rid of. And I'm going to keep doing this. So you're going to see more of this. And who knows, you might, might hear about some interesting tobaccos. You might not. But the rule is, once it's chosen, that's what I smoke for the week. Unless... And I'm putting a clause in here that I didn't put in in the beginning, unless it's unsmokable. And that's, this falls into that category. So this is going to go into, uh, well, I hate to say it, but I'm going to throw this away. I don't, I don't even feel comfortable giving this to someone. And I wish I had given it to someone when I first got it, because I knew it was not going to be something I was going to smoke quickly, if at all. And instead, I dropped it into a box of other stuff and forgot that I had it and now it's ruined. So my apologies, Stefan Skip, for that. Uh, but yeah, I can't even give this to someone else because it's just bad. So you're probably watching my last bowl of the mystery tobacco. Darn, I'll have to smoke haunted bookshop all week. Uh, but it's fun. So if you want to tune in next week, we got a couple that are in contention. Crooner's been in contention for like three weeks now, and people don't want to pick Crooner, which I find interesting. And this would have been a great week for Crooner because my wife's not home and she doesn't like Crooner, so I could have could have smoked the heck out of the Crooner this week. But no, got the mystery backy instead. Oh well, such is life. I'm gonna stop smoking this. It's uh, it's. Making my tongue feel like I just gargled with, uh, I don't know, 
part isopropanol, part 7-up or something. It's just not, not good. Sorry. <laughs> but I did my duty. I, I smoked it on Friday night, and I tried it for you on, uh, on in the weekend chat. So with that, uh, what's well, tonight holds very little for me. I'm going to watch Spanguli and go to bed. Uh, tomorrow, got to get up early. Going to hit the flea market, hit the car wash, vacuum out the car. I got some new uh, floor mats that I need to put in. And uh, then I'll probably come down here and do some, some work on my chest of drawers. So, yeah, we shall, we shall see how that all goes. And with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw this to a close. So I hope you have a wonderful Sunday and looking forward to a great week ahead. And until we speak again. I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.